<laughs> How has the mobile money scene changed in Africa in the last couple of years? What are the main challenges that you're facing now and what are people focusing on? Mobile money has changed dramatically in the last couple of years, especially about five years back now uh, with the launch of uh, M-Pesa in, in Kenya and the launch of M-Pesa in Tanzania. Um, people are certainly adopting the services and we are seeing a much more educated population base, uh, a much better appreciation of e-money and the use case scenarios are evolving day by day. Um, and as, as we grow, we are seeing more and more industries finding benefit in the ability to transfer value through electronic means rather than, than cash. What is the regulator's approach to mobile payments? Uh, in Tanzania, the regulator is very much in support of uh, electronic mobile payments um, or mobile payments. They really see value in the ability to push back those access boundaries, financial service access boundaries. They are favoring um, e-money solutions because it provides uh, it goes where banks have struggled to get to purely because from a cost overhead point of view it's much more affordable and much easier to get value out up country using a mobile handset rather than the traditional bricks and mortar mechanisms and what the regulator would like to see evolving eventually is an e-money ecosystem where people are able to use e-money as a form of payment and not to have to worry about trying to cross the cash bridge from electronic value to, to cash. So in summary, the regulator is glad to see that uh, people who have previously been excluded are now coming into the folds of financial services. What are some of the critical considerations that banks and operators need to think about when launching a mobile money service? Mm, they need to be aware that it's going to take a long time and it's a very lengthy exercise in education. Um, it's the, the most important aspect that they need to be aware of is that it's not an overnight drop a, a billboard, up, uh, put up a billboard and expect to have uh, adoption. They, they need to be ready for the long haul and they need to be um, cautious in, in the rollout and uh, the business plans need to be supportive of the, the solution. Based on what you now know, uh, what advice would you give to somebody looking to launch a mobile money service? Um, my, that, that there is no single solution that will be replicated in any country really. They, they should look at other countries to understand lessons learned, but they are going to fail if they try and replicate or blueprint a solution from one environment to the other. They need to do their, their investigations, they need to find the use cases that match their, their needs and deliver accordingly. Um, where is mobile money headed in Africa? Uh, what's the next big thing and what are you most excited about? Um, it's The sky's the limit really. I mean, the, the next big thing I, I would imagine is large-scale adoption of the service, um, seeing electronic payments becoming the norm and the next big thing is to see money, e-money going across borders. So the next evolution of, of the service, I see a, a hub, if you like, of sorts that will allow e-value to be exchanged between Kenya, Tanzania, specifically just around Africa. Um, there is huge demand for value to be uh, transferred across borders in a secure, auditable manner. And what it will bring is um, speed, simplicity, the ease of use, and on top of that, it will improve the government's ability to trace money moving across border. So how has your experience of MMT Africa been? Uh, fantastic, it's been very, very uh, informative. I, I enjoy the, the networking opportunities. The exhibition is great. Um, no, so it's been uh, an event that I will certainly be visiting next year around. Thank you very much. Thank you.